Hi guys, it's John from Android Alex, and today we're going to be doing another benchmark test on the Galaxy S21. So as always, we have the Exynos 2100 here on the left, and on the right here we have the Samsung Snapdragon 888. So these have both finally had the June update installed, and it did take quite a while to actually uh, come out this month. Not 100% sure why, but uh, we got the Exynos version yesterday, which was the 22nd of June, and the day before that, the Snapdragon version got it on the 21st, so a bit of a delay this month, so maybe they've kept it back a bit to improve some things or tweak some things, but uh, not 100% sure why, but it does indeed include performance improvements for the camera. So I have recorded some videos today, which I will be sorting out, and I'm going to do some night video recording as well, but for the time being, we're just going to do these benchmark tests, see how they get on here. Obviously do please subscribe to the channel if you want to see the camera comparison test for this month because that will be up in the next few days. You'll see as always we have the floating temperature widget in the top of the screen here. So 34 degrees currently on the Exynos and 36 on the Snapdragon. I have powered these off and powered them back on so they're both a clean boot and they were both charged to 100% when I first started setting up for the video. Okay so I'm not 100% sure what's going on here but the scores have plummeted down quite severely. And we can see here the Exynos has gone from 1096 from its single core last month down to 965. The multi-core score has gone up a tiny bit from 3353 up to 3359. But also on the Snapdragon, the single core has gone down quite substantially from 1119 to 615. And I don't know what's happening here with the multi-core, but that's even worse with a score of 2607, which was down from 3521 last month. So something really weird has happened here. Um, I've given the phones enough time to start up. You know, there's nothing starting up in the background particularly. So yeah, that's uh, that's quite a shocking score here for both phones. I'll just quickly scroll through what's going on. I think this is the first time that the Exynos has actually ever beaten the Snapdragon in the single core score at least. So. That's uh, interesting to see, but yeah, it's, it's quite disappointing really to see that something has actually gotten worse with the latest update. Okay, we're going to move on to the compute scores now and see how they get on. Hopefully they won't be uh, quite as catastrophic as the CPU scores. Let me know what scores you're getting this month as well with your updates. Has yours gone down as well? Because uh, I'll be a bit disappointed if it's only mine that have uh, seemed to decrease so much. Okay, so the compute scores are in and the temperatures are interesting as well. The Exynos is running at 36 degrees, whereas the Snapdragon is at 39, so it's getting quite warm. Now the scores, again, they have gone down on both. So we've gone down to 7521. Last month we had 7559. And over on the Snapdragon, we're at 4291. Whereas last month we managed to get a score 4648. So definitely worse off in both departments here pretty much, except for the fact that the Exynos did a tiny bit better on its multi-core CPU test. Okay, so after that slightly depressing result in the Geekbench, let's go into Antutu and see how they fare here. So I have updated these to the very latest version, which is 9.0.10 on both. And we can see last month's scores here, so fingers crossed we'll get a similar, if not better, this month round. So I'll just skip through this and we'll come and look at the results once they're done.
Okay, so the Antutu benchmark results are in and it's not looking good again this month for the results here. So we've gone from 735,000 on the Exynos down to 682,000 and we've gone from 752,000 on the Snapdragon down to 691,000. So a huge decrease on both phones this month. You can see the peak temperature of the Exynos got to 42.8 whereas the Snapdragon only got to 40.5. I will just open up these and we can just have a quick look through the scores. So again, GPU performance wise, we can see that the Exynos is scoring higher. So this time it's gotten a much higher score on this refinery level. Whereas the Terracotta one, which I believe was over 100,000 last month, is now down to 68,000 on both. So. Very, very interesting scores there. But yeah, overall, that's uh, it's a very disappointing thing to see, especially as I've been waiting so long for this update. It's kind of uh, depressing to see it like this. But anyway, what I'll move on to now is the stress test. Okay, so this is last month's results, and I'm guessing they're going to be a lot worse, sadly, this time around. Now what they have allowed you to do here is actually, in this latest version, is actually set the amount of time you want to run the test for. So I'm going to leave it at 15 minutes because I haven't got all day to sit around and uh, run stress tests. And I'll set the safety temperature here to 50 degrees and we'll just see how they both get on. I'll skip to the end of this because this is like watching paint dry and we'll just see how bad these results are going to be compared to last month's. Okay, so the stress test has finished. And as I expected, things are looking pretty bad. Let's start off with the Exynos to begin with, and we can see here that the CPU performance is pretty bad here. Last month we were seeing, you know, hovering around 80. We're kind of going dipping now down to around 60% here, which is pretty, uh, pretty disturbing to see, but not quite as disturbing as the 13 minute mark here, where we drop all the way down to 40%. I think that's the lowest I've ever seen on the S21 here. Does peak up a tiny bit there to about 50%, but this is this is terrible. Um, if we have a look at the cores and the clock speeds here, we can see our lovely three gigahertz line has completely vanished from the Exynos, and we're now down to this sort of two to 1.8, 1.6 maybe gigahertz on the fastest cores. So we have a look at the CPU performance on the Snapdragon here. It's a similar story. It's pretty, pretty bad this is. I don't know what's happened, but we can see here uh, if we compare to last month where we had, you know, peaks of 100% quite frequently, we're now peaking at around 80% here, but we're hovering around the 60% mark as well. In fact, it seems to start off worse than the Exynos here. As we can see here, this is 50, 40 sort of percent here. 45, 50% for the first few minutes here. A few peaks above 80, but hovering around 60 as we move into the sort of seven minute mark. And we're going down to the 40s and 50s again, just peaking at 60 towards the end of the test. So something has uh, happened here. So if we have a look at the CPU cores as well on the Snapdragon here. We can see the, for the first time ever that the fastest core, 2.8 gig core, has gone down after about seven minutes and 50 seconds, has actually started being throttled. I'm not sure if the Snapdragon department has been infiltrated maybe by one of the Exynos uh, team, but we can see here the throttling is quite bad. It, almost on the dot here at the seven, you know, eight minute mark, we have gone from 2.8 down to about 1.8 gigahertz, 1.9 gigahertz. So. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen throttling here on the Snapdragon. Not very impressed, really. Looking back at the Exynos as well, we can see the fastest core here going down to one gigahertz, which is uh, is pretty, pretty bad. Temperature wise, it didn't particularly get any hotter than they did in previous tests. So yeah, think of that what you will. We've definitely had a huge impact on performance here for some reason. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, let me know what you're getting as well, because I can imagine people panicking when they've done their, you know, nice fancy new update to only find that it's actually made their phone perform worse than it was before. Okay, so we're going to move into the 3D Mark Wildlife tests here. We're both running at 36 degrees. I'm a bit scared to actually do this because 
I have a feeling that they're uh, like the other tests that we've seen are going to be a lot worse. But we'll just go through them and see how they get on and I will see you at the end of the test. Okay, so as we can see here, again, I'm pretty shocked at all this. The wildlife scores are looking pretty abysmal here. 11 frames per second, 8 frames per second, overall score of 1836 and 1366. So bear in mind, last month we had a score of 5908 on the Exynos and 5833 on the Snapdragon. We can, you know, we've lost a huge amount of score and performance here. The frames per second, I mean, it's you can see from the video, it's just completely unusable. So that's really quite poor. Okay, so I've let the phones cool down a bit now, and we're just gonna go into the Slingshot Extreme. So just bear in mind that last month we were maxed out on both phones, the score was completely maxed out. I have a sneaky suspicion that we're not gonna get that this month, but let's, uh, let's have a look anyway and see how we go. Okay, so I'm slightly relieved to see that the Exynos is still maxed out here with the slingshot test. Sadly, the Snapdragon has gone down to 6,251, which is actually worse than it was getting in the April update. So yeah, it's, it's very sad to see what's happened to these phones. As I uh, keep saying over the course of this video, things seem to be getting worse this month. So let's just scroll through here and have a look. So we can see here overall in the graphs that the Snapdragon is struggling to get past 60%. It does peak at just over 80% on the final physics test there, whereas the Exynos does peak a couple of times over 80%, which is why we can see the 100% on the graph. So overall, the Exynos does perform a bit better this month round than the Snapdragon. And we can see here the frame rate ranges between 17 and 101 on the Exynos and 15 and 84 on the Snapdragon. Okay, so there we have it. That is the end of the test. And if I was to put one of those shocked faces on my YouTube thumbnail, I think it'd be quite appropriate because I am actually quite shocked as to how bad these phones are now performing. So we've gone from a pretty decent set of results in May down to abysmal, probably some of the worst results we've had since the phone released in June. So hopefully if Samsung are watching this video, they will go and kick their software team in the bum to try and get them back into the gear to get these issues sorted out because I would say that's an issue. It is, you know, it's affecting performance. You can visually see how they were stuttering and struggling in a lot of the tests here. And yeah, it's not really something that you're paying for when you buy this phone. I understand updates do sometimes have bugs and glitches, but I don't think I've ever seen anything quite as bad as the performance degradation in this month's update. So again, let me know what your results are down below so we can compare and we can all cry as one collective family. Be sure to click the like button if you like the fact that you're not the only one with this poor performance and also subscribe to my channel for more videos coming very soon. As I said earlier, I've got the camera test on the way and we'll just see how the night mode and the daytime photos and zooming have improved, if at all. But yeah, certainly this month for benchmarking, it is pretty poor to say the least. If you want to support the channel and become a member, you can click on the join button and that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.